last time we discussed uh, motion of a charged particle in a uniform magnetic field and we took very general uh, approach and found that if you send a particle with some initial velocity v naught which you call x direction. So, you send the particle with v naught in x direction and then uh, you have a magnetic field in uh, z direction. So, perpendicular to the magnetic field we are injecting it and then we wrote uh, force is equal to q v cross b and from there we wrote the x component of the force, y component of the force, z component of the force was 0 because it is q v cross b. So, if b itself is in z direction v cross b has to be perpendicular to z direction. So, that force was not there and there was no initial velocity assumed and therefore, the whole motion was in x y plane. Then we derived the equations the position and the x position and y position at time t when t equal to 0 is taken here is uh, derived as x equal to v naught by omega sin omega t y is equal to v naught by omega cos omega t minus 1. What is this omega? What is this omega here? This omega is this omega is q b by m that is omega. The charged particle the charge is q its mass is m b is the magnitude of the magnetic field. So, this quantity is named as omega and uh, it is a very appropriate symbol appropriate name because you see if I call this as omega then your x and y are coming as something like sin omega t and cos omega t and velocities are also derived velocities v naught cos omega t v x is equal to v naught cos omega t and v y is minus of v naught sin omega t. So, we have complete description of the particle what it will do at time t I know it is x coordinate x position I know it is y coordinate y position I know the x component of the velocity y component of the velocity. So, entire motion is here in these equations, but now from these equations I have to connect to the actual motion which is taking place in that world in that uh, region. So, that is our task now next task that using these equations what is the path of the particle oh, and all those things we will try to derive from here. All right, so, let us uh, make some space we will be keeping this x and y essentially we will be needing this rest of the things I can erase. We would like to get the equation of the path we do have equations of the path here x as a function of t and y is a function of t. So, it is a parametric equation uh, of the of the curve, but we can get a direct equation if we eliminate t from here and here and get a relation between this y and this x. So, what we do is x is equal to v naught by omega sin omega t let us write that x is equal to v naught by omega and sin omega t remember what is omega? Omega is as it is written here q b by m and y if you if you write what is v naught by omega cos omega t v naught by omega cos omega t what is this this will be y plus v naught by omega verify that I am writing it uh, correctly this side I am writing v naught by omega cos omega t. So, v naught by omega cos omega t minus v naught by omega which I will be shifting to the LHS and then it will become y plus. So, this side is y plus and v naught by omega this y this y and then this minus v naught by omega comes this side and becomes plus v naught by omega. So, that is plus v naught by omega here. Now, to eliminate t 
just square and add. So, you get x square plus y plus v naught by omega square is equal to v naught by omega square and into 1 sin square omega t plus cos square omega t that is 1. So, this is the equation of the path and what is this equation? What curve is this? This is equation of a circle right. If you write x minus alpha square plus y minus beta square is equal to some r square, this is equation of a circle with center at alpha beta and radius r. If alpha beta are 0, if the center is at the origin, then it is x square plus y square equal to r square and that is the standard first equation that you learn about the circle. Now, here if you see this alpha is 0 here. So, for this if I write center will be at 0, x coordinate will be 0 and y coordinate will be minus v naught by omega. So, minus v naught by omega. So, this is the center y minus beta alpha beta is the center y minus beta here it is y plus v naught by omega. So, the y coordinate of the center will be minus v naught by omega and radius radius. So, radius is v naught by omega this is the radius. First let us look at the dimensions. First let us look at the dimensions. So, if we have not made any mistake then in the dimension should be uh, consistent. Let us see that. V naught by omega this is x coordinate this is y coordinate. So, this should be length and here also radius is v naught by omega omega. So, this should be length. So, let us see what is this v naught by omega. So, v naught by q b here and then m here and this you have to check that this is uh, this is essentially length. You can see it from here you can see it from here this omega is 1 by t 1 by time. How do I say that? sin of omega t cos of omega t. So, if you are getting sin of omega t this omega t should be a number you can take sin and cosine only of a number you cannot take sin and cosine of a length or time or force it has to be dimensionless. So, omega has a dimension of 1 by t and if you use that this is 1 by t. So, this t goes here velocity into time and that is length perfect perfect. So, now come to the original uh, situation physical situation that we started with what we had was we started our journey where you have magnetic field in the z direction. So, this is x axis, this is y axis, z axis is coming out of the board right handed system i cap cross j cap should be equal to k cap. So, z is coming out and everywhere we have a magnetic field in z direction having the same magnitude b everywhere. It is not easy to get a uniform magnetic field in a, a big area is not very simple experimentally you have to make a lot of effort to get uniform magnetic field in a, a extended region, but nevertheless for our interest we assume that. And we started with that here is a particle at t equal to 0 this charged particle is given a velocity v naught this is at t equal to 0 and then we leave it 
and then the magnetic field will uh, decide the fate. Okay. So, this has to this particle has to go on a circle, which circle? This circle, this circle, where is the center? 0 comma minus v naught by omega and v naught by omega is this, v naught by omega is this mass times v naught divided by q b. If your speeds are non relativistic, you can write this as linear momentum and q times b. So, that is v naught by omega and minus v naught by omega that means, it has to come here somewhere here this is the center, this is the center minus v naught by omega you calculate what is v naught by omega, v naught is given to you, magnetic field is given to you, charge on the particle is given to you, mass of the particle is given to you. So, you know what is v naught by omega that much distance in the negative y direction here is the center and the particle is here and going in this direction and this has to be center. So, what kind of circle it will be? What kind of circle it will, it will be? It will be a circle of this kind. It will be a circle of this kind below the x axis of this radius of this radius of this radius center here. If the particle has a negative charge, if this q is negative, then everything will be reversed. If this q is negative and then uh, this v naught by omega will be negative and minus of v naught by omega will be positive, the center will be here. So, if you have projected the particle in this direction and you have a negative charge, then the center will be here and you will have a circle of this kind. Okay. So, it has to go in a circle is positive charge it bends downward, negative charge it bends upward. Similarly, if you reverse the direction of the magnetic field, then also you will get uh, this way or that way and since the initial velocity initial velocity is here then this will be clockwise and this will be anti clockwise. So, it can be clockwise it can be anti clockwise and so on. So, that is the path of the particle. Okay. Next is we have assumed that our velocity is in x direction or in, uh, in in this plane x y plane, if it is in x y plane then also the same story. What happens? Suppose, it is in x y plane, the initial velocity is this way. Suppose, this is the initial velocity and you have a magnetic field, you have a magnetic field uniform magnetic field. What will happen? Simple story, why should I take this x axis? No it is our choice, it is our choice. We can take the x axis this way and we can take the x axis y axis perpendicular to it. Same situation, if it is positive charge, if the magnetic field is coming uh, out of the board, then this uh, center will be here on the y axis negative y axis and therefore, it has to bend this way, it has to bend this way. Otherwise, if it is negative charge or the field is in opposite direction, it will bend that way. So, this is very simple you calculate what is the direction of the force. Another thing is forget everything. Remember this that radius has to be m times v naught divided by q b. So, you know the radius and if you know the radius you can uh, very easily locate the center. So, need not use excess at all. If you suppose you have a let me take that reverse bit, so that you also get experience of that. Suppose, the magnetic field is going into the board, magnetic field is going into the board uniform and then the particle is given some velocity in this plane perpendicular to the magnetic field. What is and it is positive charge and this is the velocity given. So, what is q? v cross b direction of this 
direction of this v cross b this is velocity and then the magnetic field is going inside the board. So, what will be the direction of v cross b if the magnetic field is coming out and this is v and this is b you turn it this way and therefore, you will go down opposite the force will be in this direction this force will be in this direction. So, it should bend this way not this way and hence on this perpendicular line you locate the center you locate the center in this side see the direction of the force and that decides whether it is on this side or whether it is on this side and the radius is this uh, m times v naught by q into b. So, that much distance you locate the center once you have you know the center once you know that this is the radius then you can immediately write the path. So, that is it and if there is a z component also. So, this is most general situation for initial velocity being in this x y plane that is perpendicular to the magnetic field. But then uh, if you also have z component of initial velocity then what happens nothing great in x and y direction your equations are identical in x and y direction your equations are identical in z direction f z is 0 f z is 0 because your b is taken in z direction or z direction is taken along the given magnetic field and hence v cross b which has to be perpendicular to b also perpendicular to v, but it has to be perpendicular to b and therefore, this q v cross b will not have any component in this direction it is perpendicular to this direction and therefore, f z must be 0 acceleration must be 0 if you have given some initial velocity in z direction it will remain the same. So, it will go in z direction z or z direction z component or z coordinate of the particle will continuously and uniformly increase at this rate whatever initial component of velocity is there in z direction with that it will continuously increase. But in x and y direction if you only see then yes it is still going in a circle. So, it is going in a circle in x y plane and at the same time it is going up it is going in z direction with a constant initial velocity whatever initial velocity is given with that it is going and therefore, it will make a spring and therefore, it will make a spring like this. spring like motion it is called helix. And in one rotation in x y plane how much is the displacement in z direction that is called pitch this this length is called pitch. So, in one complete revolution in the x y plane for that you know how much time it will take this omega is here. Uh, and this happens to be the angular velocity because uh, here is here uh, here are the equations sin omega t cos omega t. So, it happens to be the angular velocity and therefore, uh, the time will be 2 time period will be 2 pi divided by omega. So, 2 pi divided by q here b here m here and that is the time period. So, it completes once circle in the x y plane x coordinate and y coordinate only if you only see that it is still a circle and one full revolution means this much of time and how much is the displacement in z direction how much will be this pitch it is the distance covered in z direction in this much of time. So, this will be equal to 2 pi m by q b and into v naught z v naught z. So, this is the time and this is that uh, velocity and you multiply you get length and that is this pitch 
Now, this kind of deflection, if the particle is going in some path and you put a magnetic field, it enters the magnetic field perpendicularly, charged particle moving and then uh, in, at a certain region it encounters a magnetic field. Let me show this situation. So, suppose uh, a particle charged particle q is going with some speed v naught and then uh, all of a sudden it encounters a region where there is a magnetic field. So, there is a region in which uh, you have a magnetic field let us say this is the region where you have a magnetic field coming out of the board or going into the board does not matter. And it is not uh, uniformly spread in a very large region, so it is a small region. So, when when it enters here and the speed is large of course, quite large speed. So, it will bend in this situation taking it as a positive charge this is a velocity and here is the magnetic field and therefore, V cross B will be downward. So, the center will be somewhere here center will be somewhere here and how much is the radius? The radius is that V naught divided by omega which is q into b into m. Now, if this V is large initial velocity is large the center is quite large this radius is quite large and therefore, the center is far far away. There may not be any magnetic field here, but still the center will be here the magnetic field is only in this much region, but the center does not need a magnetic field and with this big radius it will turn. So, it the, the, the circle will be, will be something of this sort, something of this sort big circle. Will it go in a circle? Will it complete the circle? It will not because once it reaches here, there is no more magnetic field, there is no more magnetic field, so no more bending and therefore, it will go on a straight line draw a tangent to this, in this line it will go. Will the speed change? We will the speed change, we, we erase that uh, V x and V y. But in Vx and Vy, one is sin omega t, one is cos omega t, some constants are there. So, that Vx square plus Vy square, you will see it is just V naught a square. It goes on a circle, but the speed does not change, right. Magnetic field can never change the speed of the charged particle on which it exerts force magnetic field can only change the direction because the magnetic field is always perpendicular to the velocity v cross b q v cross b. So, it can only change the direction of motion, but cannot change the speed. So, with this same speed v naught it will go in this straight line now. Now, this has a huge applications. By the way, I have given this rectangle, but that rectangle is not needed. This magnetic field is not used, this magnetic field is not used, this magnetic field is not used. Even if you have a circular region, even if you have a circular region, so that this path is the same inside the magnetic uh, field is the same story. So, this has uh, many applications. I will just uh, try to tell you two of them briefly. One is where we have accelerators, we have particle accelerators where charged particles, charged particles means you take the particles neutral particles, neutral gas for example, and then that gas is injected and then uh, there is some chamber, some mechanism where you strip one or two electrons, take out one or two electrons and it becomes ion positive ion, it is charged now. And this uh, particle is now sent with certain velocity, certain speed uh, in a tube which contains electric field. That means, let us say we have this tube which we call accelerator tube.
So, in this side you are giving some a particle is going here with certain positive charge you have taken one or two electrons say helium plus for example or helium plus plus for example and then uh, there is an electric field here in this you have electric field. So, you apply a pro appropriate potential differences batteries or power supplies and create an electric field. What will electric field do? It will change the speed the magnetic field will not change the speed, but electric field can change the speed. So, if the direction of the electric field is same as the direction of the velocity, then uh, it will change the speed, it will increase the speed, it will accelerate the particle, but it will go in the same direction. So, depending on how much uh, field you have applied, what is the length, what is the potential difference at the end, this comes out here with a great velocity. So, here it enters with a very small velocity, but here it comes out with a great velocity. That is the role of particle accelerator. And why do the people uh, this uh, use all this thing? They accelerate the particles because these highly energetic particles can do lot of uh, material synthesis, synthesis and other things. You can study many phenomena using these particles and for that you need uh, big operators or uh, chambers and, and things like that. So, suppose uh, I have uh, some equipment here, some equipment here for doing some useful work and then these particles are going here and doing your work that is fine. But generally with one accelerator facility you have varieties of uses 3 4 uses at least. If you have 3 4 uses then every time dismantling it from here and putting up a new operators here because these operators are also many times they are not small operators they also are huge uh, setups. So, that is that is very difficult and uh, uh, not practical. So, equipment one is here what they do is they set up another equipment that for the second kind of experiment they will they will set up this equi equipment to here. Then uh, for some third kind of experiment they put up equipment 3 here and then here they will put a magnetic field they will put a magnetic field. So, some kind of currents and that currents will produce magnetic field and when this enters here if the magnetic field is switched off then straight goes into this equipment the beam goes into this equipment, but then uh, if the magnetic field is applied then it will bend. So, depending on what is the direction of magnetic field it can bend downward it can bend upward. So, if you are applying and you can adjust the magnitude of the magnetic field because they are controlled by the currents. Then you can uh, make it bend and go straight into this equipment or if you reverse the magnetic field apply appropriate magnetic field you can bend it this way and then it comes out it goes straight into this you can have 3, 4, 5 such equipments and this magnetic field here can switch this beam which is coming to this equipment or that equipment or that equipment and so on. I will uh, describe one more use of this kind of deflection in, uh, in, in laboratories where we do varieties of research next time.